In this video, I'm going to talk about breaking bad news and how to do it in a way that is skillful and supportive. I'll show you the scientific evidence that backs up this approach and give you some examples so that you can see and hear exactly some of the words and phrases that you might use. Even though breaking bad news conversations are some of the hardest conversations that you can have, I am confident that if you learn to apply the framework and tips that I'm going to share with you over the next few minutes, you need never worry about these kinds of conversations again. And perhaps more importantly, you will be in a position to help others through some of the most challenging moments of their lives. My name's Hayden Richards. I am an emergency physician, and this is Comms Lab. On this channel, I share what I've learned about having difficult conversations. If you're someone who works in healthcare, then I am sure that you'll find this material really helpful. But honestly, I think that we all have to have difficult conversations from time to time. And so if you're interested in learning how to do this better, I think you'll find these videos really useful no matter what kind of background you come from. Okay, so when it comes to breaking bad news, why is it so important to be able to do this well? Well, if you've ever been on the receiving end of one of these kinds of conversations, you'll know that these are the kinds of moments you'll never forget. The moment someone finds out they have some serious disease, or the moment that someone finds out that their loved one has died or, or is going to die. These are the kinds of moments that are burned into a person's memory for the rest of their life. Now, don't get me wrong, th there is no way around the fact that receiving bad news is painful. But if it's done well, that experience can be remembered as one where the person receiving the news felt genuinely supported through that pain, even to the point where they may eventually be able to reflect on the experience with gratitude. On the other hand, if it's done poorly, it has the potential to induce genuine trauma on a person and leave that person genuinely scarred for the rest of their life. Now, that's a lot of pressure on you to get this right. So let's talk through an approach that you can apply when it comes to the time when you need to deliver bad news. The first thing to know when you're gonna give bad news is that sequencing really matters. What I mean by this is that the order in which you do things in this conversation really makes a big difference to how the overall conversation is perceived. And for that reason, it's kind of useful to have a framework to guide this. Now there's a bunch of different frameworks out there, but probably the most well known is the Spikes framework. Spikes was first developed by Dr. Rob Buckman. If you're interested in learning more about Rob Buckman's story, and it is an amazing story, I'll link to a great podcast episode in the description below. But now what I really want to talk about is the framework itself. Let's talk about spikes. S is for setting. Doing your best to set things up for this kind of conversation is absolutely key in terms of how it will eventually turn out. In my experience, the key things to consider are ensuring privacy and avoiding any interruptions. Ideally, it's good to use a private room that's quiet, and I always try to remember to hand off my phone before I go into one of these conversations and also let the team know that I'm about to deliver some bad news before I go in. Also, if possible, I try to remember to bring another staff member with me, often a nurse who I can rely on to be empathetic and supportive. And when we all sit down with the patient or the relatives or whoever it is we're, we're gonna be speaking to, and always sit down if you can, when we do sit down, I always ask them to sit alongside the person receiving the bad news rather than facing them. So sort of on, on the side of the patient or, or the relatives rather than alongside me. I was taught this quite a long time ago by a mentor and I've always found that it really facilitates a much more supportive atmosphere than when you have kind of a situation where the healthcare professionals are on one side and, and the family or the relatives or the patient is on the other side. Obviously at this point, it's also really important to introduce yourself um, and, and let them know what it is in, in broad terms that you want to talk to them about. Hi, my name's Hayden. I'm, I'm one of the senior doctors. This is Joe, one of our nurses. And uh, we just wanted to talk to you about what's happened with your grandfather. P is for perception. And it means checking the other person's perception or what their understanding of the situation is before you give your side, before you actually deliver the bad news. Look, before I go into the details, it would be really helpful if you could tell me what you already know about the situation with your grandfather. This is so important because it gives you a sense of how surprising 
the news is going to be for them to hear. If they've already kind of worked out what it is you're going to tell them, which is often the case, then the remainder of the conversation is going to be mainly around confirming their understanding and, and clarifying any particular points. But if they have no idea of the news that you're about to tell them, then you might need to take some extra care in delivering that news and do it in a stepwise approach and, and, and prepare yourself to support them through the intense emotions that will inevitably follow. I is for invitation. And it means seeking the other person's invitation to proceed with the bad news. The way that I've been taught to do this is with a hypothetical question. The question can relate to whether the person would want any additional support to receive the bad news. If I had some difficult news to share with you, would you want anyone else here uh, with you as a support? Or it can relate to the amount or type of news that they would like to hear. And this is particularly valuable when you need to give someone a new diagnosis of some significant disease. If I had something difficult to tell you, would you prefer to know everything in detail? Or would you rather me just give you the, the broad brush strokes? Seeking the invitation in this way is, in my opinion, incredibly valuable for a number of reasons. Firstly, it functions as a warning shot. When the other person hears the words, if I had some difficult news to share with you, they're almost certainly gonna register that you actually have some really difficult news to share with them. This allows them to start preparing themselves mentally to receive that news. Secondly, it gives the other person just a tiny bit of control over a situation where they might otherwise feel like they had all control just stripped away from them. Again, this will help them prepare mentally for what, for what is to follow. Thirdly, it gives you some real guidance on, on how to proceed. Of course, having given them this choice, you need to respect the approach that they've requested. K is for knowledge. This is where you actually have to give the news. You have to impart the knowledge. And this part is obviously really hard. Here's some suggestions to help get you through it. When you're gonna actually give the bad news, speak slowly in short phrases, leaving plenty of space between each phrase for the other person to process what it is you've just said. You need to keep in mind that this is an enormous amount of change happening in their life immediately. And they need the chance to actually process that. Secondly, use clear, simple language without any jargon. And thirdly, deliver the information in a short narrative with three to four steps. Your grandfather was brought in after a severe car accident today. He suffered some very serious injuries to his head and his chest. He was brought into the emergency department in a very serious condition. And over the last hour, we've all been working as hard as we can to save his life. I'm so sorry, but unfortunately, he died a few minutes ago. When someone has died, it's, it's really important to actually use that word, died. This can be really hard. It can be really hard to say, but, but using euphemisms like passed away or passed on or anything else that's not entirely clear can be really confusing to the person who's receiving the news. And it's not your job to add confusion on top of all the other intense emotions that they'll be feeling right then. E is for emotion. And I think emotion is the reason why these conversations are so hard. And I think it's why many people shy away from all kinds of difficult conversations. Basically, you need to support the other person through the emotion that they will inevitably feel as a result of receiving the bad news. And you can do this by providing them with as much time and space as they need to express their emotion and then validating that emotion with empathy. It could sound something like, I, I'm so sorry. I can't even begin to imagine how devastated you must be feeling right now. 
I've heard a lot of people uh, worry out loud about um, expressing empathy in these kinds of situations because they worry that it's not going to sound authentic, that it's going to be kind of fake. Um, and honestly, I think the key to being real and authentic in your empathy is to actually allow the whole situation to really impact you in some way. To really imagine what it must be like for that other person in that moment. Now, of course, it's important that you don't allow that emotion to overwhelm you. You definitely don't want to be in a position where the other person is actually having to support you through emotion. But showing them that human side of you um, can be an immensely therapeutic thing for them to see. Now, if you're someone who finds responding to emotion really hard, or you're just not great at expressing empathy, um, there's a series of videos that I've made that specifically addresses this topic uh, that you might find helpful. I'll link them up here and also down in the description below. One more thing about E for emotion. The evidence shows that this step, the way that we respond to emotion after delivering bad news, is actually the key factor in determining how the other person perceives the conversation overall. So it's definitely worth getting it right. Finally, S is for strategy. And it essentially refers to the plan for what happens next. The key thing here is not to start delivering the plan until the other person has had a chance to process the news and, and, and process their emotions to the point where they can actually take on this new information. So how do we know when that is? Well, I usually wait for them to tell me. In my experience, at some point, the intensity of the emotion just subsides a little bit um, and they're able to reason and connect with their thinking part of their brain just enough that they tend to look up, make a little bit of eye contact and, and say something like, So what happens next? When I'm actually giving them the plan, I use the same rules I applied when delivering the bad news, all in an effort to make sure the information is easy to understand. If I'm about to take them through to see their relative, I'm also really careful to make sure I warn them about what they might see, uh, especially if it could be a little confronting. It might sound something like, So, if you would like, I can take you through to see your grandfather now. I need to warn you that he had some blood around his head and he still has a breathing tube in his mouth. You can spend as much time as you would like with him and you can also call any other close relatives who you might want uh, to see him. If you prefer, I can help you with, with making those calls as well. When you've had enough time, uh, we will then move his body to another part of the hospital. If you'd like to arrange uh, for us to, to contact our social workers or, or make any religious arrangements, we can help you with that too. So that's it guys. By no means the only definitive approach to delivering bad news, but what I hope it is, is at least a framework and some tips that I found really helpful over the years. Now, there's gonna be some exceptions to this approach. Um, in fact, there are exceptions to this approach and framework at every step along the way. And perhaps I'll make a future video that addresses these. But if I was to give you one last tip um, that I would say is super important, I would say just stay alert as to what is happening for the other person at every point through the process, at every point through the conversation, and always be prepared to validate their experience and respond to their emotion and respond to their questions no matter where they crop up. Thank you so much for watching. I will link all the references and all the other videos in the description below. And as always, I would love to hear your feedback. You can contact me via the contact section below, or you can send me feedback uh, via a JotForm link that I'll put in the description. Take care, and I will see you in the next video.